Okay, I think it's now 42, so we should definitely give this, uh, this session a start. Sure. Yeah, okay, good. So welcome everybody to this uh, uh, presentation about the uh, slide view VS200 research slide scanner from Olympus. Also, you see in the top right evident, this is kind of the new name of Olympus. So that's why you see two logos in the top right. Today, Wei Juan Wong will be uh, with us, uh, an application specialist from um, for this system. And she will make a kind of a remote demo at the end where you see the system running. I'm Flavio Giacoboni, strategic marketing manager. And I will just quickly introduce you what is the VS200, the slide scanner? What are the advantages for a core facility or for anybody who needs to scan a lot of uh, slides? So let's go and start this presentation. There is definitely the need to see much more in the laboratories uh, because uh, you actually want to see more details and the structure at the same time. You're doing some spatial phenotyping on genomics. Uh, you need to acquire big data, so you need to scan a lot of slides. Or anyway, you find yourself faced with a lot of uh, slide uh, in number and variety. Of course, you may use traditional instruments like upright inverted microscope or even a confocal microscope, but these instruments are not tailored for the job of slide scanning. For slide scanning in research, you need a system which is dedicated to the task, a system which brings you quality, speed, and flexibility. In the next few slides, I will tell you more about these three aspects for the VS200. So the VS200 is uh, Olympus uh, Research Slide Scanner. It's available in two models, basically. One is called the VS200 ST, which means a single tray. And this can load a maximum of six uh, standard slides. But we also have a system with an auto-loading uh, mechanism, which is holding up to 210 standard slides. The, speaking of quality, and now we go you know, a little deeper into the uh, technicalities of this system. What is in the VS200 that provides you uh, quality for your research? Well, first of all, it's based on our best objectives, the Olympus X-Line objectives, which you may have already have heard about. And they are top um, objectives providing you uh, great uh, corrections and great image quality. Then we created a very short optical path between the objective and the camera to ensure the highest possible uh, image quality. We also brought fly eye lens and they uh, use a true color LED, which doesn't distort the colors of the staining, especially when you work in bright field. And we have an all aluminum stable frame, which is a frame which is very robust and allows the system basically to be precise and robust also for very demanding tasks like scanning 24 hours a day for seven days without stopping. This has been tested with the system, it's working beautifully. Now, if we think about speed instead, we can, uh, you have to consider that this system is using standard objectives, which means we have six position and in each of these position, you can mount any of our objectives from two X magnification up to hundred X oil magnification. This means you can always find the best compromise between the details you want to get and the speed to which you want to achieve uh, the scanning. But still, uh, also speaking of speed, as a time saver, we said 100x oil and we have automated oil management. As you can see in the video, the system is calculating the necessary quantity of oil and it's just dropping this automatically on the slide and then the oil scanning can start. And this is completely automated. Also, we have very fast loading times. You can load uh, each slide, can be loaded in about nine seconds. And we have bright face scans of about 90 seconds um, uh, for a standard 15 by 50 millimeter area at 20x. And fluorescence also is very fast, even if, of course, there is much more to acquire during fluorescence. But the same area with three channels and a 20x magnification single layer can be acquired in six minutes, which is quite a fast time. This means the system can provide you your data in a very fast way and also in a very flexible way, because of course you are in a laboratory, you need the system to follow your needs and to follow you what are your uh, samples, what are your type of observations and the type of samples. The main point about the VS200 is that it's not moving slides. We uh, put the slides into trays and we move trays. This means that we can of course use uh, different slides sizes also at the same time in the machine 
we ensure the slide safety because the slide is basically never touched by the system. It's just always in the tray. And this is also a very reliable system which ensures that the slide is flat and safe inside the scanner for maximum precision. This also allows you, as I said before, to mix different slide sizes in the same scan. But also about mixing, where the system can provide you five different observation techniques, bright field, fluorescence, dark field, polarization, and phase contrast. And you can mix those observation techniques so that you can find the right technique for your sample or combine techniques to really bring out maybe the morphological details and the functional details of your sample. You also have a choice. You can choose what kind of camera you can have. Basically, uh, Orca flash models from Hamamatsu and Excite light sources, which means you can find the best camera for your application and the best light source for your application. The system is also coming with advanced features like 3D deconvolution, can also sustain multiplexing. So uh, basically, acquire multiple times the same slide but with different fluorochromes and creating maybe a slide with up to 32 channels of fluorescence in the same, uh, let's say, sample. We also have functions for image analysis and, and of course, recently we added the deep learning AI, which we speak a little more about in a later slide. We have functions to uh, have a database of images. We have functions to share remotely your images. But the most important thing about the VS2 and the system is that the system can be upgraded anytime after you purchase the first maybe uh, single trace uh, scanner, you can later upgrade to auto loading or to oil scanning or make um, insert different objectives and different filters and different software functions. So the system can be upgraded, upgraded anytime on site, both in software and hardware. And we think this is a unique advantage, which gives you a very high return on your, on your investment. Very important when you have a uh, scanner into a, a core facility or into a big laboratory is about compatibility with the workflow there. So the system can definitely save the images in its own format, which is the Olympus VSI, but we also provide the possibility to export to OME TIFF or Big TIFF or TIFF images, JPEG 2000, JPEG and PNG images. This ensures that the images you create with our systems are compatible with the majority of analysis packages. And another very important part is that you can also create DICOM standard images, also getting data from a laboratory information system. The other big point is that, of course, we can read the barcodes which are on your samples, and this uh, data uh, can be read and then put as a property of the um, slide name, which means that the images can be automatically saved with this information and then hard handled further in the workflow, depending on their barcode, uh, to the analysis system or to any software which is picking up this information. Um, in a laboratory, it's very important, of course, to be flexible, as we said. And you never know what kind of samples are coming in laboratory. Maybe you have a very big uh, batch scan running of 200 slides, and someone comes and says, hey, I want to scan these slides now. This is, of course, no problem in the VS200. You have this exchange trace button, which is activating the so-called priority scan function, which allows you to stop the batch scan, insert the slides you want to do, do them and then restart the batch scan without problems. This also allows the continuous loading of the system. So the trays with the slides which have already been scanned can be taken out, a new fresh one can be inserted into the system while the system is basically running. And this will minimize the idle times of your system. So maximizing efficiency and return on your investment. Um, another very important point is that the instrument should be able to be uh, used by different level of users. You can have a very expert user, you can have a very, let's say, initial users who uh, want to be guided in the acquisition. For this, for example, if you set up the uh, things properly, the system can also start a scan in just three clicks. Load the slide, click three times, and the scan is starting automatically. Or you can switch to a fully expert mode, which allows you to define every parameter of your scan. Also, you can save so-called scan projects. So if you have a study which is requiring a lot of scanning, you define the parameters, you save them and load them. Like you can see, for example, here, there is a virtual Z, uh, Z stack for a five micron section. And these are all the kinds of samples which are coming in. And then you ensure that the system is then both safe and simple to use, but also is not introducing biases because you are changing the slide parameters during your study. So this ensures the quality of your data also. 
Also, the system can do parallel operation, which means that once you have the overviews acquired, you can start working as soon as they are acquired and defining what you want to scan, where you want to scan it, while the system is going on to acquire the other overviews. And also you can have a mixed batch scanning as that before. You can have uh, slides of different sites in the system in the autoloader and you can define for each slide a completely different kind of acquisition. Once this is defined, then you just press a start scan and the system will simply automatically go on and produce the scans that you need. But as I said, let's go deeper into maybe what is interesting, which is the application of AI into scanning. We have our scanning solution is a software option, which is called VS200 through AI, and is our deep neural network. In this case, I will show you how it can be used for segmentation of complex structures. We have, for example, a, um, a kidney section where we want to see the pancreatic islet, and these are stained with DAPI and CY3. Of course, you can see from this image here that it's not easy to uh, find those aisles. The aisles are actually there, and with normal threshold methods, this is a difficult situation. Of course, the human eye can see that very well, but this is where the AI is coming on play into play. You can train your network, and then once your network is trained, it can identify, and you can see them with the red overlay, what is the pancreatic islet and reject other areas which are similar, but they are not the ones where the system has been trained to. And then of course, once the uh, AI is recognizing the structures, you can actually define them as objects. So you see the green overlay there, and then you can count basically uh, the uh, pancreatic islet or characterize them by area or any other parameter intensity or fluorescence in another channel maybe. And this is of course something which once it's set up, it becomes automatic and very efficient for uh, saving you a lot of time. Because a scanner should save you time, should bring you efficiency, should allow you to acquire the data that you want in the less time possible in a very fast way. Uh, another application where we uh, actually introduce AI for is for the recognition of faint samples. You can see uh, the same kind of sample, very thin section, only staying in fluorescence. And of course, if you look at the bright field, well, our human eye can somehow recognize where the sample is. But for a threshold method, this uh, traditional algorithm will have a very hard time finding exactly where the sample is. But with the application of the VS200 through AI, then the complete net, uh, sample can be recognized in a good way. And of course, you can be sure that the system is then automatically, again, getting the data that you want, saving again you time and any hassle. So just to, that was a quick one, sorry. I want to leave some time for my colleague to make a good re a remote demo and also for question at the end. Uh, this is a short summary that the slide view VS200 is a very robust and flexible platform for slide scanning, which can handle any slide size with multiple magnification techniques in a high quality. It's saving you time with fast scan, schemes, uh, fast scan speed, smart interface and AI. And that can be upgraded on site anytime to follow your needs, providing you a really reliable workhorse performance, both for extensive and detailed studies. That's complicated to say, I agree with you. That's why we started with the need to see more in the laboratories. And we say that the slide view VS200 system gives you the power to see more in an easy and efficient and high quality way. We coming back to the true AI now, because we have seen, of course, the segmentation part, the reliable sample recognition, and we will see more about what we call morphological scanning. And now my colleague Wei Juan can switch and start sharing a screen to make you a remote demo. Once that demo is over, we are open to receive your questions. Feel free to uh, speak up for your question and we will answer them. So I hand over to you, Wei Juan. Thanks, Flavio. Just start sharing your screen. Yes, I will do so. Yep. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see that. Great. So um, thanks, Robert, for the presentation. And um, I'm very happy to um, perform this um, live demo um, here from uh, Münster, Germany, to show you the system. So um, as I have been made the time, so I will show you just um, two main topics. So first is a mixed batch scan that um, Flavio has mentioned before, and also a little bit more to um, introduce you really the sample detection using AI. So now let me start with a batch scan here. 
Then um, as Flavio has mentioned, um, we have a loader system that can scan 210 standard slides. And you can actually see the status of whether a tray is present in the system and how many slides are inside. And also we can um, choose the different scan projects for each slide that we want. So uh, my slides of interest are in um, tray 22 over here. And I can also go to gallery view. So um, this enables me to assign different scan projects on the individual slide level. So um, the first slide that I want to show you is actually a um, immunohistochemistry sample, an IHC um, tissue section. And I will show you how we can um, do a uh, sample detection based on AI. So um, I already have the um, scan project set up for this, so I will directly apply it. And the second slide I have is um, actually the same one that Flavio showed just now. It is the um, pancreas section um, stained um, with fluorescence. It looks quite transparent. And I can also apply the um, corresponding scan project here. The third slide um, is a um, commercial mouse kidney section. So this is the slide where I really want to show you how our AI sample detection can uh, do like um, morphological um, sample detection as well. So out of this kidney section, we will specifically detect the um, glomeruli. And um, as for other slides, you can also detect, um, you can also assign the projects based on your um, requirements accordingly. So you can really mix and match by um, just assigning different um, scan projects. And you can also do it at a tray level. So let's say you have these three trays that you want to scan and you can assign the scan projects accordingly. And let's say if you want to um, remove them after you scan the overview, you can also choose define batch content and then you can um, unselect it. So it is, um, it is really convenient in this way to, to choose the slides that you want to scan from a loader. So um, let's um, begin with the scan. And then um, after the scan has started, you will be able to see the um, progress over here on the right. And if you really want to see what is happening or for each individual slides, you can also go to the um, gallery view. And here in the gallery view, you'll be able to see the status of each slide. And also at a glance here at the bottom, you see, you're able to see that on which scan projects that you have um, assigned for each slide or tray. And then um, you will be able to see that whether it's bright fuel or fluorescence for here. And again, here you'll be able to see the detailed scan um, objectives, magnifications that you have picked for each sample. So for example, the second slide, the detailed scan will be at um, 20x, whereas for the um, first slide is also 20x, and the third slide is at 40x, for example. So you can really see your um, settings at a glance over here. And then another thing is that you can see um, for the third slide, because I know this is a smaller section, you can also change your like the overview um, size and the magnification. So all these are really um, flexible and up to the user to, um, to set. So um, the first slide has been completed. So let me quickly take you to the, to the scan area to take a look. So here is the um, result of the um, sample detection using the um, AI neural network. Um, we train this um, in-house here, we call it bright field paint samples. So this is the result that is um, detected by the AI algorithm. So I can choose to hide this and you can see this is the um, IHC tissue section. So I can do a comparison. So with the AI, I can also switch back to the um, generic detection. So this is what we had um, in the past. So it is also, it is also okay for like um, H and E samples. However, for this particular one, you can see that the top part of the tissue is quite um, transparent. Then it is not so easily detected by the generic um, detection method. So um, of course I can increase the sample detection sensitivity or um, I can um, 
change the non-color sample detection weight, um, that will of course improve the results, but this um, requires time for optimization and it is not as convenient as um, having a um, AI neural network sample detection that does all the detection very accurately and really saves the um, effort of uh, having to optimize all the settings. So then this um, is really a, a good option to directly have something that works out of the box that you don't need so much optimization. So um, we come to the next slide, which is the um, pancreas tissue. So as you can see, it is really faint. However, with the um, AI sample detection, you can also detect the um, scan areas very accurately. And from this on, because this is a fluorescent scan project, you can also do the uh, regular fluorescent settings, like um, setting the four different channels, for example, DAPI, FITC, SI3, SI5, and have all the um, exposure times set, um, optimized for each, um, some, uh, each channel. So the third example that I really want to show you is um, this um, kidney sample. So as you can see here, this is actually a um, 4x um, scan for the whole section of mouse kidney. And um, you can see these um, little green spots over here. So this is um, what the um, AI sample detection detects. So that is the um, glomeruli. So um, this is really something that is useful that um, is able to do this kind of like a morphological sample detection. And then you can choose that um, you can just go on to just scan this chromoduli instead of um, having to find it manually for the for the whole tissue. So this really um, saves effort to and it can really um, pick up a morphological structure that you want. So you may have other um, specific structures that you want to detect and scan, such as like um, pancreatic islets from a pancreatic tissue, or you might want to specifically identify hippocampus um, from a brain sample. And you can optionally create this um, neural network using our true AI module, and you'll be able to um, create this neural network and apply this on the sample detection so you can you can use it. So Wei Juan, um, we have now five minutes until the end. So basically, two main things to note here. While you were working on the first slide, the system was going on and acquiring the rest of the overviews. So that's what we said about parallel working. The yes. scan is not stopping when you are working with the system. And right. also here, uh, you definitely, the, the meaning is that you can train the system to recognize very complex structure, and then you can simply scan only those structures, gaining a lot of time back because you don't need to scan the whole tissue. You just scan what you need at the magnification you need. That's a great time saver. Um, yeah, thank you, Wejuan. I think uh, we can leave the five, last five minutes for question, correct? Yes. Okay, so if anyone has some uh, question to pose, uh, that can be just spoken out, I think. Uh, in loud voice. So anybody from the audience who would like to uh, put a question can simply start speaking up and we will hear the question and answer right away. Or alternatively, uh, let's see if we can have the chat over. So far, no questions from the... Seems like there is no question, which means that, of course, the, unfortunately, the, the time was very short to go more into details, but in the, uh, you will find in the content library, we put there the brochure of the system, we put there uh, three application notes, and of course, you can find much more on our Olympus website. If you go to the product page of the VS2 and the system, you have many more videos, many more um, let's say application notes that tell you how much the system is helping the researchers currently in the market to gain back a lot of quality without sacrificing time and ease of use. 
So the VS2 under system is also a system which is being constantly upgraded and constantly made better. So we have a very aggressive release cycle, which allows us to continuously add new features to the scanner. This to make sure that the scanner is always following up to what are your needs and to what are your, um, your specific application uh, parameters. Okay, so I think we are basically there with the time, still a couple of minutes. As I said yes. before, if anyone wants to send a message or let's say speak up, please do so. Yep, so um, Flavio, you just mentioned that we are able to do this um, very accurate um, sample detection with the um, AI sample detection now. This also means that um, instead of doing an uh, expert scan project, which always uh, requires you to, to review the overviews before you do a detailed scan. So if now the AI sample detection is very accurate, then you can actually directly do a quick note. So just as you mentioned. Yeah. So we, you can do a three clicks and with the assistance of AI sample detection. So yeah. I think that's one good point to make. Yeah. So they just put all the three participants into a way that you should be able now to unmute yourself and speak. Sorry, that was probably the problem there. Did any one of you try to uh, speak that question? You are able to do that now if you want. Okay. 